Hello, Nick here from Technovo and welcome back to the channel. So a few weeks ago, my coffee machine packed in and I was absolutely gutted. It lasted a couple of years, so out of warranty. Can't really complain, but I needed something sharpish to keep my caffeine levels up. I had a low budget really of about three to 400 pounds. I wanted bean to cup, I wanted to grind, I wanted to get textured milk as well. I was looking at the Sage Barista Express, but that was nearly 600 pound retail. I kept searching and found the Breville Barista Max. It's an all-in-one espresso machine with grinder and milk steamer for 299 pounds. Too good to be true? No. I'm actually really quite impressed. Let's take a look. So this is an espresso machine and that's what it will deliver, a shot of espresso. At the top of the machine, you've got the hopper, which can hold a 250 gram bag of coffee beans, but it's not airtight, so bear that in mind. That feeds into a metal grinder, which can be adjusted via up to 30 increments, smaller, larger coffee granules. There's enough flexibility there to get the course of coffee you want for your espresso. The top of the machine also acts as a warming plate, so turn the machine on and 10 minutes later, the cups placed on top will be warm. To the rear of the machine, there is a large removable 2.8 litre water tank. To the front of the machine, a number of buttons, power on, off, start, stop, water flow, and single or double shot buttons. To the far right, a rotary knob to control the steam wand. Below the grinder is the outlet and it acts just like much more expensive machines. Put the porter filter beneath the outlet, somewhat lock it into place and then gently pull down and the grounds will be released. There is a handy light that will turn on when grounds are being released, helping you see how much coffee is coming out. The porter filter, it's 58 mil and you get single or double baskets included in the box. To the right of the grinder outlet is the water dispenser. Insert the porter filter, twist it into place and you're ready to go. Then further right to that, is the steam wand. At the very bottom of the machine is the water overflow tray and part of that includes a small plastic container to collect overspilled coffee grounds. Spec wise, it's a single pump or heat machine at 1.3 kilowatts, so you can't pull a shot and steam at the same time. You have to do one or the other. Pressure wise, 15 bar, and I'm not too sure if you can mod that. Um, from taking a closer look, I wouldn't want to open it up and change the spring. If it is a spring, like most would say to do with say a Gadget Classic Pro. Using the machine is pretty straightforward and you can either just go for it or get technical and start measuring and testing to see what works best for you. At first I got the scales out, I was measuring the coffee grounds and shot time to try and work out what I needed to get the best shot possible. Over time I got lazy or I just didn't have enough time in the mornings, but I've pulled enough shots now that I kind of know what I need to do. Roughly, I go for 18 grams of coffee, mid setting on the grind, 14, 15 or so, and pull a double shot in about 25 seconds. If you wanted to, you could weigh your beans out and only ever put in the required amount of beans into the hopper instead of keeping a whole bag in there and guessing. That configuration for me gives a really nice smooth shot with a nice crema. Next, texture in the milk. You get a metal jug with the machine. I fill the jug up to the bottom of the spout or about halfway with milk and steam. There is a pre-steam, turn the knob to the right, it will release uh, an initial burst of water into the drip tray and wait a few seconds. You'll hear the steam wand kick back in, so insert your jug and get steaming. This does make really nice, silky, glossy textured milk and once you've practiced enough, it's easy to achieve every time. As for making some latte art, I'm fairly confident it's achievable, but I'm yet to master it but I will keep working on it. I typically make cappuccinos every day. Uh, it's how we drink our coffee in the house. And after the first few being just okay, the ones I'm making now taste absolutely delicious. I recommend turning the machine on a bit before using it, let it warm up. But I have noticed that after about 40 minutes, the machine will turn off, so don't wait around too long. Cleaning the machine is easy. The drip tray is very large and can hold a lot of waste. All you have to do is pull it out and empty the waste into the sink. Make sure you wipe the machine down after every use, including wiping the dried milk off the steam wand and the main water outlet with the small brush that is provided to remove any residue. If I remember, I do flush water through the porter filter and a little in the cup too to get it warm before making my coffee in the morning. There is a descaling program, a little light on the machine will light up and you can just follow the instructions to clean it. And I think it's every month. At the moment, I've got no complaints, but it's still early days. I'm impressed with how easy the machine is to use. It's good quality for the price and anyone who has had a coffee from me recently has really liked it. Longevity is a concern. I do have hard water in my area. I will keep on top of descaling, but I hope the machine can withstand it. If I was being really picky, the grind is a little bit slow, a little bit messy, and the distance from port filter to drip tray 
isn't great. Fine for a shot or a small cappuccino cup, but if you wanted to add scales underneath, you've got to find the right cup. I'd also upgrade the tamper, the plastic one provided. It's okay, but you can easily get something better, a metal one off Amazon or something pretty cheap. So there we have it. I'm really impressed with this machine for the price. It ticks all my boxes. The coffee coming out is really very nice. In this price range, you won't find anything of similar spec or quality. You need to add a couple of hundred pounds more to get the Sage or something similar. This is my go-to machine now for the foreseeable future and I'll be using it daily. So if you have any questions now or in the future, drop them in the comment section below and I should be able to answer them for you. That is a wrap on this video. As always, thank you very much for watching. And if you want to see more videos in the future from us, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and they will show up in your feed.